So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service True Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> Pag nanuli tayo, wala tayo may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basihan ng isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isa ilalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat rin ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. 
Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at polisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> Pag nahuli tayo, wala tayong may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan 
o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basehan ang isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isailalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat rin ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at polisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! Welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PIDS webinar series. We trust that all of you are safe and in good health. I'm Sheila CR, and I will be your moderator. So friends from Digital Trade and Digital Health, which we uh, discussed last week, we are shifting to a new topic this week. This afternoon, we will look at the implementation of the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act, as well as related policies. After more than two decades since it was passed, how did we fare? And what can we do better in the new normal given the pressing challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic? We will answer these questions and more in our conversation today. 
To formally open our event, I now give the floor to my, Dr. Marife Ballesteros, the Vice President of PIDS. Peng? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sheila. Let me first acknowledge the presence of key officials among the participants. We have Senator Cynthia Villar, Under Secretary Maria Cabral of the DPWH, um, Assistant Secretary Anne Cabochan of DTI, Assistant Secretary Jonathan Uy of NEDA, Governor Knopp Concepcion of the Philippine Board of Investments, President Gregorio Del Pilar of the National Research Council of the Philippines, uh, Palawan Vice Governor Georgia Lynn uh, Kiyakon of Brooks Point, uh, Palawan, uh, with officials and representatives from the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines and other leagues. From the private sector, we have uh, CEO Virgilio Rivera of Manila Waters, CEO Winchester Lemon of Envirotech Waste Recycling, Golden Press CEO Maria Belen Lim, Oli Consulting Group CEO Leo uh, Dominguez, In One Go Technology Incorporated President Ramon Garcia, President Jesse Manalili of Echo Remates Incorporated, President Henry Rara of HM Grande, Vice, First Vice President Rowena Magpayo of Philippine National Bank, Ascent Incorporated uh, Vice President Jeffrey Gatdula, Vice President uh, for Operations Manuel Hamonier of Udena Infrastructure Corporation, from the Academe, we have uh, President Urduha Alvarado of Cagayan State University, President Josdado Zulueta of Marinduque State Colleges, Vice, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Clydell Rondaris of the Pamantasan ng Lunsod ng Manila, Vice President Mirna Lorenzo of Pampanga State Agricultural University, Dean George Manzano of UANP, Dean Decibel Esclava, Eslava of the UP Los Baños, Dean Paul John Madrigal of Trece Martires City, Dean uh, Jimmy Maming of Malay Colleges, Colleges, Dean Eva Orlina of Aklan State University, Associate Dean April Gumad, Gumnad of uh, St. Louis University, from uh, CSOs and NGOs, uh, President Crispian Lau of the Philippine Alliance for Recycling and Material Sustainability, President Danny Ngo of Philippine Plastic Industry Association, Vice President Maricel Joaquin Harencio of Sigma Hanon Development Foundation, Phil Export Assistant Vice President uh, Maria Flordelisa Leong, European Movement International General Secretary Violeta Seva, uh, Worldwide Fund for Nature Philippines, Na National Lead Sar Sarina Panopio, Forest Sustainable uh, Associate Director Marian Pastor Pide, Director Daniel Agustin of Masagana Saka Sakahan, and uh, uh, Deputy Regional Director Albert Lee of Samahan ng Kabataang Voluntario. Uh, to our other guests and colleagues from all sectors of society, including friends from the media, as well as those who are watching uh, through the PIDS Facebook page, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. After two decades since the enactment of the country's Ecological Solid Waste uh, Management Act of 2000, it is important to gauge how far we are from achieving the intended objectives of the law. The current statistics, if you look at it, however, is not uh, promising. The Integrated Solid Waste Management Plan of three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, has yet to be felt. Solid waste produced in the country have been estimated uh, to double by 2030, especially in the cities. And uh, despite the slowdown in economic activity, the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the situation as waste materials surge 
due to the increased use of disposable masks, shields, uh, personal protective uh, equipments and gears, and other uh, medical and health care supplies. Prior to the pandemic, uh, our record in terms of average uh, uh, metric metric tons of garbage collected is about 14.66 million metric tons of garbage per year. That's the average. And in 2020, a total of 17 million metric tons of waste was recorded. A sizable proportion of this refuse is openly burned or dumped in streets, uh, waterways, and bodies of water. There is also a very limited number of materials recovery facilities equipped with technologies to reduce waste, like recycling and composting. In the midst of the health risks, the climate change and other global risks, we cannot be uh, business as usual because a uh, garbage crisis can become a source of another pandemic. So this afternoon, we have Dr. Um, Sani Dobinko, PIDS uh, Research Fellow, who will present the results of the process evaluation they conducted on the implementation of Republic Act 9003. Particularly, they reviewed the provisions and the grounding of the law and other related policies, as well as carried out case studies to examine what we have achieved and what we have failed to do so. On a positive note, uh, there are also some best practices among uh, local government units that can be further improved and scaled up. There is also a move in Congress to amend Republic Act 9003 to keep up with the demands of times. Some senators are pushing for the passage of Senate Bill 1789, otherwise known as the Waste to Energy Act, which supports the use of new technologies and proper waste management. This bill is, of course, a very welcome act from the Senate, and we would indeed, we should indeed start thinking beyond the traditional means of solid waste disposal. We should even think beyond the establishment of just sanitary landfills. The accelerated growth, economic growth, the high demand for energy and advancement in technology we create a promising environment for the adoption of waste to energy technologies. If we look at Sweden, a country with zero garbage, this has been, has been able to do so because of very efficient reuse and recycling of waste. So to know more about the latest government programs and initiatives on solid waste management, we have invited us discussants uh, use Under Secretary Benny Antiporda of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Ms. Maria Clarice, Clarice, Clarisol Agas, Project Development Officer and Solid Waste Management Focal Person for the Manila Bay Cleanup Rehabilitation and Preservation Program of the DILG, Engineer Marlon Pialago of the, the Municipal Environment and Natural Resources Officer of Teresa Rizal, uh, let me take this opportunity to thank our discussants for accepting our invitation. And we, look, we also look forward to hearing your comments and insights on the study's findings and recommendations. So we have actually a very good representation of all stakeholders, uh, starting from our discussants. Uh, for the environmental sector and waste management sector, among our participants. So I hope that uh, our viewer, viewers will stay until the end of the webinar and actively participate during the op open forum. With that, thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you very much for your introductory uh, remarks, uh, Dr. Balesteras. Um, actually, I was, uh, we, ha we have uh, more than uh, 300 uh, web uh, participants now. And from uh, um, Facebook, we have uh, nearly um, 200, uh, 200 uh, Facebook viewers. Okay, friends, um, without much ado, let us now listen to the findings and recommendations of the study of PIDS, which look into the implementation of uh, the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. And this study, as Dr. Uh, 
Ballesteros mentioned was conducted by uh, Dr. Uh, Sunny Domingo and Ms. R. V. Choi Manihar. And to present the uh, paper or to present the study is uh, Dr. Domingo is a senior research fellow at TIDS. Sunny has more than three decades of extensive multi-sector technical and policy research exposure in agricultural R&D and extension, natural resource management, and disaster risk reduction and management. And his current uh, research interests include ecological integrity and environmental policy, technical agriculture and resource economics, and climate change and disaster risk management. Uh, he obtained his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and his PhD in applied economics from the Orange Campus of Charles Sturt University in um, uh, New, New South Wales, Australia, as a fellow of the Australian Center for International Agricultural Research. Sunny, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Peng. Okay, so let's start, let's start our presentation. Um, we did this study last year, and it was done with Ms. R.V. Choi Manihar, a research analyst of PIDS. So it's been a year since we have uh, started working on this, but uh, still I think we need to cover more grounds. Now. So probably this is an evolving work, and uh, we'll be doing more of the same in the coming years. So let's uh, go to the next slide. The outline of presentation, so we'll be introducing study, its background, the methods we have applied, and uh, the key results of the study, looking at the global and the Philippine landscape in terms of policy, policy evolution and institutions related to solid waste management, waste generation and facilities, that's what we have and what has been recorded by DNR, case studies on solid waste management as we look into local government grounding of the policy, waste management in the time of COVID, little flavor of what is current, penalties and incentives, strategic options for solid waste management, and then eventually the, the core insights from this uh, review. Next slide, please. So the um, increase in waste generation is linked by literature essentially to rapid urbanization, lifestyle changes, and consumption patterns. In the Philippines, we have been seeing a rapid increase in, in waste generation, not only in urban centers, but also in the provinces, in the rural communities. Daily waste generation in the Philippines is around 40,000 metric tons, expected to double by 2025 from previous estimates. Compounding the problems are leachate inclusion, water pollution, climate change related uh, impacts and disaster risks. RA 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act was passed in 2001 to address waste management concerns with most mandates devolved to local government units consistent with uh, the local government code or RA 7160. Next slide please. So the objectives of the study are review the provisions and grounding of the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000 and related policies, conduct case studies on local government implementation of solid waste management, and recommend ways forward. So this is a very straightforward study. We essentially looked at the policy, the landscape in terms of what we have in the country, and then we looked at certain cases in our localities. Policy questions to be answered, or what we answered are, what issues predominate in LGU grounding of solid waste management? And then what policy augmentations are required or seen needed? Next slide, please. So we did a process evaluation of RA 903, looking at the provisions, looking at uh, how it was grounded, both nationally and subnationally. And then we looked at case studies uh, in, four, in four representative sites, particularly in Quezon City, where we have Payatas, uh, as a very well-known open dump site before, and now uh, it's closed as, as a sanitary landfill. 
and there is now mining operations in the area. Rizal, uh, the province and Teresa, the municipality, Bulacan and Pampanga, as also uh, two of our case study sites. And then we did key informant interviews, focus group discussions with our key stakeholders, including our institutional partners from the ANR, um, PSA from our CSOs, including Gaia, and then our LGU coverage, mostly from our case study sites. Next slide, please. So looking at the global landscape, we have the higher the GDP per capita income of a country, we are looking at more generation of plastics and papers. Compare that to those with lower GDP where biodegradables uh, predominate. Incineration is used in developed countries, particularly, for example, the US, Europe, and other countries uh, I'll be mentioning later. While developing nations mostly depend on dump sites, landfills, which are actually cheaper to operate. Organic matter make up most of the wastes in Asia, making the region probably unfit or unfeasible in terms of using uh, viable incineration technology. 242 million tons of uh, plastic waste were recorded in 2016, globally, 12% of which were municipal waste. In the country, we have been producing a lot from our households, and later on we'll be showing you the figures. 11% were incinerated globally. Next slide, please. So what we have in the country is around 57% of our solid waste uh, generation coming from households. 27% from commercial establishments and then the remaining 16 from institutions. In terms of composition, we are producing actually more than 50% of uh, our wastes as biodegradables or compostable materials. Only 27% are recyclables, 17% residuals. From the projection of the ENR and uh, National Solid Waste Management Commission in 2015, supposedly we have reached 17 million metric tons per year of waste generation in 2020. So I think we have to update this and see whether uh, the pandemic has also impacted this figure. Next slide, please. So RA9003 was actually founded on several other uh, policies, particularly as what we have indicated here, PD25 of 1975, uh, the first SWM-related policy directing uh, penalties for simple littering, the NRAO 199849, the devolution of waste disposal to municipalities, MC number 1998-39A, creation of the Presidential Task Force and waste management. The salient features of RA 9003 for the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act include the devolution of segregation collection of residual uh, residential solid waste to barangays, while special and hazardous waste were uh, relegated to the municipalities and cities. Forced closure of existing open dump sites and transition to uh, sanitary landfills within five years of the policy's passage. Required a solid waste management board at each local level to oversee solid waste management plans subnationally. Slide, please. So the landscape's rich in terms of related policy. What we have here is a list of both baseline policies as well as functional policies related to solid waste management. Um, highlighting, for example, in terms of baseline policies are, number one, the Clean Air Act of 1999, the Climate Change Act of 2009, and the rest are indicated here. We also have functional policies that mandate, for example, the grounding of those bigger baseline policies. Next slide, please. So we have a lot in terms of uh, what we have policy-wise. The essence of such really is the institutional grounding. And uh, later on in the discussions, we'll be looking more at how to augment such. 
So RA9003 looks into capacity augmentation, institutional mechanisms, SWM planning subnationally, materials recovery facility establishments within barangays, controlled dump sites from open dump sites, as well as the transition to sanitary landfills, supposedly five years after the passing of the law. Post uh, sanitary landfill operations, R&D, environment uh, cooperatives and associations in terms of them also cooperating and complementing efforts. So those are to address, for example, uh, what we have to your left, which are what we have in terms of pollution, groundwater surface, coastal issues related to solid waste uh, proliferation and, and uh, operations of open dump sites. Direct uh, exposure of human population near or within dump sites, and of course, the release of methane gas, greenhouse gases, air pollution, also related to what we have in terms of our concerns on, on climate change. Slide, please. In terms of hierarchy uh, in our solid waste management uh, options, what we want really are waste avoidance, reduction, reuse, and recycling over the actual safe disposal. So we're looking at interventions at the level of the households, the barangays, before eventually we dispose the residual solid wastes. Slide, please. Institution-wise, we have the key actors represented there, also mandated in terms of policy, the National Solid Waste Management Commission, now being housed under ENR, the local government units, which are given so much in terms of mandate and responsibility uh, through this policy. Pro the private sector, in terms of them also contributing, complementing, cooperating, and our solid waste management efforts, and of course NGOs in terms of them lobbying for the ideals you know, related to solid waste management. Slide please. So policy evolution wise, um, I think this slide is a bit advanced because we'll be looking at later on our um, case study sites, which are the four areas indicated here, Quezon City, Rizal, Bulacan, and the city of San Fernando, Pampanga. So funding-wise, and in terms of uh, priorities, what we have here are a checklist. No? For Quezon City, you have resources coming from 20% uh, era, coming from penalties as well. In Rizal, you have a lot in terms of sources, which include also the 20% uh, local development fund, general fund, meeting fees, products, as well as uh, contributions for from external bodies. In, in San Fernando, I think it's quite ideal that they are also linking with um, organizations outside uh, government. That includes CSOs. Slide, please. Okay. So what we have here really is quite interesting. So you have uh, the top 10 waste uh, contributors based on the waste uh, assessment and brand audit conducted by, by Gaia. The Global Alliance in Incineration Alternatives. So you can see here the bulk, uh, the biggest number, the biggest percentage really comes from plastic labo and the rest are branded uh, plastics. So. Plastic Labo, you have that, uh, for example, the, the transparent uh, plastics that are very widely used. So they comprise around 27% uh, of the total uh, plastics that we have. And then around 54% are from branded uh, plastics. So this is very much related to institutions as our partner in terms of solid waste management and eventually cutting down such uh, residuals uh, that we have to dump in our landfills. Next slide, please. 
waste generation and facilities. What we have here are 57% residential, 27% commercial, 4% institutional, 4% industrial in 2013. Now, in 2018, the waste assessment and brand audit uh, conducted by Gaia presented around 61% compostable, 14% recyclable, 13% residuals, um, which means that we have more bio biodegradables now and uh, a similar amount of residuals in the end that we have to dump in our in our landfills. Next slide, please. So waste generation uh, in terms of our key areas of study, uh, location-wise, Quezon City, Rizal, Budacan, what you have here are indicative numbers in terms of what they have locally. So each locality has its own um, character in terms of generated waste as well as how they treat such or manage such. Slide please. Collection wise, what we have here is a good number in terms of revenues or returns and costs. And it's very apparent that uh, collection activities and material recovery facilities and activities generate returns. So SWM activities incur costs, incur costs but uh, in the end, there are also very rewarding activities that can generate uh, resources uh, that can be infused uh, in their solid waste management systems or schemes. So, this is from the uh, ASPBI uh, survey of our Philippine business in, and industries, as well as the census from 2000 to 2015. Next slide, please. Waste survey. Um, if you're going to look at diverting wastes, the case of San Fernando, I guess, is very uh, enlightening. They have claimed around 93% compliance to RA9003 with around 76% uh, diversion of their solid wastes in 2017. So that's a good figure. That's a, that's a very promising figure that can be um, used at, probably used as a template you know, for other LGUs to, to emulate, to follow uh, in terms of what they have been doing in San Fernando. Next slide, please. In terms of the number of uh, material recovery facilities established, supposedly all barangays are mandated to have their own. But uh, what you have here is, is uh, a figure that's not really one, one is to one. So around 10,340 servicing 13,611 barangays. And in terms of materials, we have your paper, aluminum, other metals, glass as uh, materials that can be recovered, collected, recycled, reused. And uh, our collectors can be from both the bureaucracy as well as our street collectors from the informal uh, sector working within solid waste management systems. So you can see here that, for example, Going outside Metro Manila, more and more activities coming from the street collectors are being reflected. So they contribute a lot. Next slide, please. Also, in terms of the trend of materials recovery facility across regions, you can see it here. So it's a good trend, it's increasing. Um, Quezon City has uh, a low compliance rate, for example, if you're going to look at uh, local government uh, specifics, 36 out of 142 barangays, although Quezon City is very much empowered in terms of resource. So um, what you have here is a very relative compliance, LGU-wise, and that is probably very reflective of the rest of the country. Rizal, for example, has around 148 fully operational MRFs, out of 189 barangays. So that's a good number. Next slide, please. In terms of illegal dump sites, 
the closure and rehabilitation of old dump sites and their placements with sanitary landfills were supposedly uh, due in, in 2006, five years after the passing, the passing of the policy or the legislation. But uh, as we know, as we see right now, uh, we haven't met such numbers. Legally, mandated in transition was not fully realized as many open and controlled dump sites are still currently in operation. And in the past eight years, between 2008 and 2018, as you noted, that uh, the numbers decreased by more than half from 806 to 353. So this is a positive development where we see the lessening, for example, of these illegal dump sites. Next slide, please. So even though the numbers are not ideal, we are seeing a decrease in the number of uh, illegal dump sites. In terms of what we have in our mandated sanitary landfills, we also have much to look forward to in terms of augmenting this number. Only 353 LGUs have access to around 165 SLFs as of December 2018. So we may have more uh, as of 2021. The number that we have in 2018 is around 21%, 22% of our LGUs having access to our mandated engineered sanitary landfills. Slide, please. Focusing on our case study sites, Quezon City, Rizal, Pampanga, and Bilacan, we'll just be going through the slides very quickly because we only have 30 minutes to present everything. We have just picked uh, highlights from our, from our study. Quezon City, Rizal, Pampanga, and Bulacan. Why did we choose such uh, localities? Quezon City is probably a very good example of the transition process from having a very well-known open dump site in Payatas to what we have now, which is uh, a closed uh, sanitary landfill, well-managed, and now it's being mined post-closure. In terms of uh, what we have in Rizal, we are looking at a clustering of uh, LGUs and Rizal actually servicing um, nearby localities now, in terms of what they have in sanitary landfills. Panga and Bulacan are also good examples. Bulacan, for example, uh, showed us how non-compliance with policy resulted in certain uh, bureaucratic uh, impositions or penalties. And then Pampanga, is a very good example of an LGU that has successfully interfaced with outside entities, NGOs, CS, in terms of their solid waste management operation. Slide, please. So this essentially uh, presents my uh, initial introduction to the case study sites. I think uh, it's worth noting that Payatas right now um, is being used uh, in terms of uh, energy generation. So it's, it's biogas is being tapped by private entity, and now they are viably producing energy from a closed sanitary landfill. And that's uh, coming from what you have in the 80s and 90s, which is a very uh, bad case of an open dump site. Next slide, please. Okay, so in terms of policies and institutions, Quezon City, Rizal, Bulacan, and Pampanga have their own translations, no? functional policy-wise. And I guess that's uh, what we have in terms of cascading um, the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. LGUs have the autonomy, LGUs have the flexibility to actually pass their own, um, their own policies, their own functional ways of grounding the bigger legislation. So this is a slide on that. And a lot of them have used, for example, linkages with outside entities. And in this case, what's being highlighted are junk shops no? and those working within the informal sector in terms of collection, material recovery, in terms of them also earning from such activities. Slide, please. Material collection, segregation, processing, Waste collection was observed to have better turnouts in urban areas compared to rural ones. Problems of non-cooperation and fit collection vehicles, ineffective routes, 
for collection service are very common in terms of the articulated problems and issues from our uh, local populace. Barangays handled most of the segregation and collection part, mostly implementing no segregation, no collection policy. These are in, in ideal case scenarios where you have very active local officials and very compliant to, to the policy or to the legislation. But there are so many LGUs, so many barangays that are also non-compliant and are not segregating, not reusing, not recycling, and also not uh, being true to the policy. There are also attempts, for example, to delegate collection responsibilities. And in this case, in the case of San Fernando, Pampanga, um, there are private contractors being tapped to do such and to complement what they're doing within the local government. In Quezon City, uh, they have implemented macro, micro cell-based collection systems for residential areas. So it's quite difficult, for example, to, to impose waste segregation in households, and you have to be very meticulous in terms of uh, following policy and imposing such, and probably imposing penalties in the end. So LGUs have the flexibility. LGUs also have their own ways of founding such provisions of the legislation. Next slide, please. So the informal economy bridged the gaps no, that we have in terms of uh, the local solid waste management landscape. In this case, junk shops are serving as pseudo material recovery facilities for those barangays without such. Although, ideally, uh, you have barangays with MRFs, uh, but in reality, some of them are, are in clusters, you know, with a single MRF servicing several barangays. But in some areas, they have uh, actually made use of pseudo MRFs. In, in, in this case, the use of junk shops, the use of uh, informal economy actors you know, in bridging such uh, shortcomings. Slide, please. Processing, you have here an example of what you have in terms of byproducts from the solid waste management system. This one is from Teresa Rizal, where they have a very good uh, linkage with the market. Uh, and the product of their solid waste management contributing to, for example, in this case, um, a cement factory and the creation of byproducts that can be marketed. Next slide, please. So again, uh, I'll be going through everything very quickly as my time is running out. Waste volume disposed um, and the tipping expenses of Pampanga. So it's not only them, the LGUs or the localities generating wastes, it's also them spending such uh, huge amounts you know, uh, to dispose of those solid wastes. And in Pampanga, you can see, you can see here, just looking at, for example, two years, in this case, 2017 and 2018, uh, the city of San Fernando actually jumped so much you know, in terms of waste generated, in terms of the amount of tipping expenses that they paid for in disposing such uh, solid waste residuals. Slide, please. So looking at what we have in terms of COVID-19, spike uh, in hazardous wastes uh, production is very evident. So you have a lot of biomedical wastes, not only coming from hospitals, but also coming from households. ADB projected Metro Manila would generate around 280 metric tons uh, of healthcare wastes, health-related wastes, biomedical wastes. And that's uh, probably a very conservative figure. Next slide, please. So Rizal, for example, just to highlight a few of uh, our findings, Rizal has the strongest incentive mechanisms, uh, which include quick facilitation of requests, provision of equipment, cash incentives, Barangay Resilience Award, to incentivize our barangay officials. Pampanga's programs were specific to solid waste management, cash doled out to assist construction of MRFs, 
equipment donations were given to best barangays, highest diversion rate, best MRF, best IEC, and in and liter free barangay, just to incentivize the local actors no, in terms of them having very good solid waste management programs. Next slide, please. Strategic options for solid waste management you have here, just a few. Landfill mining, gas to energy, what, as what you have in Quezon City. So they have closed their sanitary landfill, and now they have been mining it with uh, a with partner. State of the art SWM facility. We have been uh, interfacing, for example, with LGUs even before we did this study, and a lot of them have been voicing out concerns about having no uh, SWM related facility, or if they have such, having very fragmented systems no, related to solid waste management. So a very good attempt probably to, to better something like this is to come up with state-of-the-art solid waste facilities that are encompassing in terms of coverage from collection to eventual production of marketable byproducts. So you have income generation supporting potentially your, your local workers coming from the informal sector. Slide this. Vertical market linkage, again, uh, to have that sustainability in terms of operating your solid waste management, you have to have that linkage with the private sector and the industries. Slide this. Subnational policy, structural and resource segmentation in terms of the bureaucracy, in terms of community engagement, and as such, you see a lot of challenges. We have indicated here, uh, no capacity building programs, on source reduction, no concrete program, linking recyclables to the market, ex officio ad hoc nature of our commissions uh, subnationally, the absence of blueprints of implementa implementation misalignments to development plans uh, within localities or LGUs, absence of teeth, cloud in terms of uh, grounding policy and lack of transparency, and limited resources within our LGUs. Slide, please. Shifting views on incineration. Now, this one's a very controversial topic. When you look at incineration, you're looking at something that's, that is supposedly against policy. But the Supreme Court has actually ruled in 2002 that uh, Section uh, 20 of the Clean Air Act really does not uh, totally prohibit the use of incineration. They just have to be compliant with the uh, clean air provisions. So they have to have uh, emissions that are non-toxic or at a level that's not toxic. If you're going to look at the global landscape, you have Malaysia, Laos, Indonesia, Vietnam, Singapore, also looking at incineration activities, qualified level. Now, this has been very active in terms of local fora and in terms of local discussions because uh, there is increasing interest on incineration due to land shortage concerns. Landfills have been found to be uh, less in terms of lifespan. So, for example, Payatas operated only for seven years before closing, and uh, source reduction strategies have been ineffective. So just uh, to run through key insights, RA9003 failed to fully cascade. The SLF transition, institutional complementation, enforcement, and compliance, uh, I think were very relative in terms of looking at subnational uh, compliance. There is weak regulatory governance and limited subnational resource and infrastructure provisions. Institutionalization of uh, municipal city and ROS are very much needed in terms of them looking at this policy and its grounding. The ANR and uh, the National Solid Waste Management Commission must be resolute and clear on policy and this has to be a whole of government responsibility, not only uh, on the part of the NR, NSWMC, and even the ILG. Empowerment at sub municipal level has to be looked at. Communities are passive. Barangays are heavily dependent on cities and municipal governments. And this is very true. We have locals, we have local populations that are really 
not contributing in terms of local discourse on solid waste management. Not only discourse, but also decision making and even participation in in compliance activities. Barangays are also given so much in terms of mandate and responsibility, but are but they are the least empowered in terms of capacity and resource. So that has to be augmented in some ways. Institutionalization of the informal economy has to be looked at as well, and strengthening of horizontal and vertical linkages from collection to linking uh, with markets and industries. So formalization of the informal workers and settlers, looking at their welfare, and then the eventual industry linkage for income generation activities, making the scheme sustainable. Slide please. Policy and institutional direction need to be harmonized. The Clean Air and uh, Solid Waste Management Acts are clear, but institutional resistance need to be managed. So, uh, for example, the issues related to incineration and waste to energy initiatives. I think this is a very rich ground for discourse and uh, exchange of ideas, but uh, we have to be compliant with policy. If it's not compliant with policy, then we have Number one, you better look at uh, whether the policy is still up and applicable, or number two, whether we have to look at other options and interventions. Technology options, interventions need to be packaged and institutionalized for, for easy adaptation within localities. Revisit LGU reliance on policy grounding, LGU full autonomy is not working. So as mentioned earlier, after two decades of passing the law, we still have to, to see a very significant uh, grounding of this policy as manifested by facilities and infrastructure related to solid waste management. Infrastructure investment from both public and private entities, state-of-the-art SWM facility design with vertical linkage to markets for sustainability has to be packaged. So this I think is very doable and, and the technology designs are there. We just have to package everything and come up with a local version that is applicable to our LGUs. SLF post closure maintenance and operation, mining waste to energy, facility transition and transfer planning need to be also looked at. Public investment on SLF in the template of build, build, build probably can be considered. For example, just looking at providing 500 million for each province or the establishment of a, of a engineered sanitary landfill would only amount to around 40 billion and you'll have answered so many concerns no? in terms of environment, in terms of health, uh, hazard exposures, etc, etc. So a small amount of money can translate to so much in terms of returns. COVID-19 realities necessitate change. Number one, greater worker protection is required in terms of training and equipment, strict waste handling and safety protocols are needed, particularly for biomedical wastes. Clean air compliant incineration, that's uh, a question for, for um, further discourse and other technology options. Next slide, please. Well, this is the last slide, just highlighting uh, key insights. For example, in terms of us augmenting institutions, in terms of us augmenting policy, and uh, in terms of the eventual actors. So institution-wise, you're looking at expenditure programming, technology options for SWM, livelihoods and welfare, particularly also for the informal sector. IEC's awareness campaigns are as core programs within um, communities for them to be more active, for them not to be passive. Policy compliance, last uh, class well, policy compliance in terms of institutions lgu wise and in terms of individuals and households clusterings institutional complementation in terms of grounding also as wm policy municipal city enrolls in terms of them being part of an augmented bureaucracy internationally barangay and community empowerment as mentioned earlier they have been given so much in terms of responsibility it's just right that they are given so much as well in terms of resource and capacity. Enforcement, penalties, and incentives have to be there. Policy-wise, the legal challenge still remains incineration and uh, waste to energy discussions. 
have to be framed up and they have to be compliant with policy. SLF post closure management and gas material mining, which is evident, for example, in Quezon City as a very feasible, viable operative uh, platform between both public and private entities. Evolution and oversight functions, public and private investments. I guess this is the last slide. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Domingo, um, for giving us the highlights of your study with uh, um, RV Manehar. Okay, so friends, uh, Dr. Domingo can provide us more details of this study during the open forums. So if there is, uh, if there are parts of his uh, presentation that are unclear to you or you would like him to expound on, just um, um, type your question in the chat box. Okay. So in which our discussion, we invited representatives from our local government units and uh, national government agencies to comment on uh, the this, this study's findings and recommendations and also to uh, provide updates on, on the ground and at the policy uh, level. One of the best practice, one of the best practice cases presented by Dr. Domingo was that of Teresa Rizal. And with us today is their Municipal Environment and Natural Resources Officer to give us more details about their experience and possibly share share with us the recipe for success. I am um, talking about engineer Marlon Pialago, who helped draft the municipality's 10-year solid, wa solid waste management plan and led the rehabilitation of Teresa's dump site and information campaigns to increase people's awareness of proper solid waste disposal and management. Engineer Pialago was nominated as one of the most outstanding employees in environment protection by the Rotary Club of uh, Rizal, and he is also one of the founding members of the Society of, of Environmental Experts and Development Specialists, an NGO that promotes environmental protection and development. Uh, Engineer Pialago, the floor is now yours, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all, uh, to Dr. Domingo and to Sheila. Uh, let me have my uh, reactions on the issues of Dr. Domingo's analysis of regulatory policies on solid waste management in the Philippines, ways and forward. I uh, read all the slides which Dr. Domingo has uh, presented to us. Uh, and I uh, just selected some uh, area which concern and to clarify some uh, issues with regards to the uh, solid waste management management program of Teresa Rizal. Okay, let me uh, start on the 3.2, which is in the policy evolution and institution. It was said that the greening program issued through executive order 2018-11. Teresa pulls an environmental inspection policy for potential commercial polluters. In Aris Ecosystem Program, also YES team, devolved to municipalities as well, provincial and municipal enro as focal person. My reaction to this is, before the YES program of the provincial government, Teresa Rizal had been implementing RA9003 since 2005. YES program, was introduced in 2018. So that is the sequence of events. Environmental inspection policy was institutionalized in our uh, municipality since 2010 because that was an offshoot of a potential polluters principle, which uh, we also provide an ordinance to implement the same. So that is on 3.2. And the 3.4, which is uh, case studies and solid waste system, it was stated that Rizal, mixture of urbanization, protected areas, 
and forested lands and the extractive industries, Teres LGU was recommended for its model MRF and the marrying of local waste management and extractive industries. This is the reaction which I have. The Teresa Municipal Material Recovery Facility or the Integrated Solid Waste Management Facility, which is uh, managed by the local government unit, was institutionalized since 2007. The structure was built on the same date with loan grant from the World Bank Netherlands facilitated by LLDA to the amount of 8.4 million. The supply of pulverized residual waste was, has started in 2010 after research and study by the Menro on the viability of refuse derived fuel used in cement production, which was practiced by Europe since the 80s. So that was it. Uh, the informal economy bridges bridge the gaps Example, junk shop serving as you do MRF and the scavengers picking out recyclables for market exchange. You, you see, acknowledging this institutionalized them and their solid waste management system. In Rizal, junk shop as markets for recyclable waste. Teresa's integrated solid waste management facility produced construction materials paper charcoal, pillows, and cushion, peelings, and coconuts. Coconuts sold to quarry and mining operators for rehab purposes. This is my reaction to this. As in other local government units, Teresa Rizal acknowledges the important role of junk shop in solid waste management program. They are all accredited in our municipal uh, in our municipality, and they are all registered. They produce from the integrated solid waste management facility were primarily from residual waste, and that is the emphasis from residual waste, which the idea came from the from the idea came after the basic of solid waste management program was introduced to the stakeholders. It was not the goal of the program for this. Uh, residual waste, but it is rather it is a product of solid waste management program. So that is what is happening in the municipality of Teresa Rizal. And 3.5, waste management in time of COVID-19. For the information of everybody, the municipal government of Teresa crafted its own pandemic waste management and an ordinance was, by, by, was passed by Sangonian Bayan for implementation, which we are doing until now while the pandemic is ongoing. And the 3.6 penalties and incentives, Rizal, it was stated by Dr. Domingo that Rizal has the strongest incentive mechanism. This involved quick facilitation of requests, provision of equipment, example, e-bikes, green vehicles, dump trucks, Cash incentives, care of PS team, Barangay Resilience Award from Provincial DRRMO. My reaction is the local government unit don't have penalties for solid waste management violators, at least in Teresa. At this was delegated to Barangay Discretion. However, for other ordinances, penalties are imposed, like using of plastics, open burning of waste, cutting of trees with no permits, and etc. The barangays have their own unique way of penalizing those who don't follow waste segregation. That is the sole responsibility of the barangay, ranging from sanctions to as severe as non-issuance of clearance to stakeholders who don't follow the proper waste management. An incentive from LGU is already institutionalized since 2007. With corresponding criteria, the local government unit of Rizal or of Teresa launched the best performance in solid waste management program among the nine barangays in the schools, both private and public. Once a week, the municipal solid waste management board make the round of the nine barangays in the schools to rate their compliance on the criteria. 
At the end of the day, the score was tallied for the weeks and documented. The men row placed a tarpaulin board in front of the plaza to show the ratings of all these uh, participants, barangay and schools in that particular week. The score is collated for the whole year in the highest score and consistent top notch win the contest. Monetary awards and plaques were given every December during a state of the mayor address in the plaza. Added to this, the standing of each barangay in the schools every week is announced in the Catholic Church every after the Mass to inform those who don't come to the municipal plaza of the current development of the solid waste management program. That way, the church and the government collaborated for the program to be successful. With this program, the municipality of Teresa ramped all the awards given by the provincial government to the most number of functional material recovery facility and the local government unit. The prices for this ranges from dump truck, motorcycle with sidecar, and other implementing materials for cleanup. The municipality for five consecutive years since 2015 onward won the Platinum Award of the Environmental Compliance Audit Program of the ALG and first one and the number one LGU to attain the honor of being in, the, in its Hall of Fame. 3.7 Future Initiative and Strategies Result partnered with cement companies wherein collected residual waste are provided to factories. Therese LGU was required to produce two tons minimum weight of segregated residuals waste every two weeks at one peso and 20 centavos per kilo or 1,200 per ton. LGUs believe no prohibitions are violated due to gray area and temperature benchmarks. So that was the uh, what was written by Dr. Sani Domingo. My reaction to this 3.7 is this. There are no gray areas in the temperature benchmarks in violation of Clean Air Act 1999, which is also known as the Republic Act 8749. Their provision is not absolute. Cement emission is regularly monitored by na National Government Agency, which is DNR, for possible dioxin and purance emissions. It is to be remembered that within the temperature ranging from 1000 degrees C to 1,500 degrees centigrade. All these dioxins is negligible. Added to this, cement processing is a high-tech process and before emit emitting any space, dust emission is recycled, everything is filtered and free from dangerous emissions. Dr. Dr. Domingo said that for result, they are at crossroads between pursue pursuing a single-use plastic ban in continuing their arrangement with cement factories for waste to energy. My reaction is, there is no crossroads to speak of. Even if plastic ban became successful, other packaging materials, residual waste won't go away. There will only be minimization, but eradicating residual waste is next to impossible. Residual waste is here to stay in the role of cement plant is imminently critical to help in generic sanitary landfill. And my last word is, Solid Waste Management Program, or RNA 003, is almost perfect low. The problem with its implementation is the lack of focal, passionate, advocate person. In my 15 years of being involved in this program, I've seen how everybody tried, yet they failed. Why? Because there was no one to lead who do know the intricacies of the law. Everybody think they knew Solid Waste Management Program, yet a simple question of what is waste cannot be defined. Capacity building is needed to equip the focal person on how to introduce properly the concept and the implementation of the said law. Pag gusto may paraan, pag ayaw maraming dahilan. This adage is very true in the implementation of Solid Waste Management Program. Other LGU tried their best to implement the law and succeeded, although not 100%. Why the others can? Solid Waste Management Program is a value rege regeneration, moral transformation, and its implementation will surely take longer. What is at stake is not how many years it will take, but how does the stakeholders understand and do the job. Small changes for the better is still significant, and we have to capitalize on that to achieve a better performance in the future. 
consistency and persistency is the name of the game. We have to be consistent and persistent in the implementation of RA9003. Technology will surely help, but at the end of the day, it's still the people. The waste generator has the responsibility in everything they do. A good steward has to manage responsibly the riches is God entrusted to him. Failure to do that is not an option. Good afternoon and thank you very much. And good afternoon to uh, Engineer Pialago. Very thought-provoking uh, comments. For, um, we'll have the chance to um, um, hear from you more during the open forum, sir. Okay, so friends, uh, moving on. Um, let us jump to the implementing agencies this time uh, for their um, comments. So uh, one of the uh, implementing agencies that we invited is the DILG, which uh, oversees our LGUs. And with us today is the focal person for solid, social, solid waste management, um, who is uh, the, um, the project development officer three and the focal person for solid waste management under the Manila Bay Cleanup, Rehabilitation and Preservation Program of the Department of the Interior and Local government. In this capacity, uh, she leads the monitoring of LGU's implementation and compliance to existing policies, including the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. She also participates in the National Solid Waste Management Commission as part of its uh, technical working group, uh, which is tasked to review and deliberate national policies and plans on solid waste management. Our uh, discussion from the DA DIL, she has a bachelor's degree in human ecology major and human settlements and planning uh, from the University of uh, the Philippines, Los Banos. Ms. Marla Agas, the floor is now yours. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. So first, I would like to uh, show my gratitude to the Philippine Institute for Development Studies for inviting us to share with you some of our insights in the presented study and hopefully add more perspective uh, from the ground. So we would also like to um, congratulate our researchers, Dr. Sani and Domingo and Ms. Arvi Joy e. uh, Manehar for taking the initiative to shed light on the regulatory policies on solid waste management in the Philippines. And uh, this study was very comprehensive and gave us information on the status on a global scale and some constraints and policy guts that led to the current state of the country. And it is not the first time that we note in terms of waste management, we are way behind our goal. And this is despite the different policies that were set years before to address this concern. And uh, this study actually reminds us to the case of Manila Bay. We all know that Manila Bay used to be one of the South Out tourism sites known for its clean waters and picturesque uh, sunset. However, due to improper waste management, the bay ended up being polluted. And not only in 2008, uh, the Supreme Court issued a mandamus order against the 13 NGAs, including this department to clean up, rehabilitate, and preserve the Manila Bay with focus on addressing the pollution sources. And one of the mandates uh, of the DALG in the order is to monitor uh, all local government units in regions 3, 4A, and NCR within the Manila Bay watershed uh, to perform their activities related to uh, management of solid and liquid waste, informal settler families, and uh, biodiversity and habitat resources. So specifically for solid waste, we were directed by the Supreme Court to monitor the compliance of the 178 LGUs uh, to Republic Act number 9003. Um, next slide, please. So, okay. So, uh, next slide. Okay. So, in this slide, uh, we just want to show you, you know, uh, the progress of the LGU compliance to Republic Act Number Nine Zero Zero Three, particular to the provision of a uh, ten-year plan practice of segregation at source, the segregated uh, implementation of segregated collection, the establishment of materials recovery facility, and the residual, uh, the residuals disposed and approved facilities, including the sanitary landfill and residual containment area. So as you can see from our baseline year, um, from the 25% uh, number of LGUs that are complying to this basic provisions, uh, we reach a 90% average in 2020. So 
um, in each uh, provision, we can see that there is an increasing trend in the number of L, uh, compliant LGUs to um, RE9003. And uh, this is possible um, to, uh, to the uh, strengthening uh, and um, efforts and initiatives, not just by the ALG, uh, but also our national government agencies. Uh, in the next slide, uh, I will share with you some of our initiatives uh, that factored in to achieve this level of compliance. And uh, you can see later that this re-echoes what uh, were recommended in our study. So first is to empower our barangay as frontliners. So we all uh, agree with the recommendation of the study on the need to increase the capacity of our barangay officials as they have a crucial role for the realization of the goals relative to solid waste management. We ensure that all barangay officials are capacitated through conduct of orientation, seminars, and trainings. The department also issued a circular to inform and remind the barangays on the organization of their uh, barangay ecological solid waste management committees. These committees are expected to initiate and monitor their solid waste management programs at the, at the ground. We, next slide, please. We also collaborated with uh, other stakeholders for stronger waste management systems. We coordinated with the academe and uh, some national government organizations. So uh, these are some of this partner uh, of the partnership I, we met, we have um, uh, we have right now uh, in Project Iwasto. So it is a part of the IM4 Manila Bay. Uh, program uh, which is developed by the University of the Philippines. Uh, this aims to assess the uh, solid waste management activities in the Manila Bay area and also a study on uh, pollution, uh, plastic pollution awareness along Manila Bay. This was spearheaded by Eco Waste Coalition. So um, we participated in the presentation where the results of the study was discussed and um, based on this result uh, we uh, we took it into consideration for our um, next uh, activities or next plans. We also uh, uh, participated in the study on extended producer responsibility scheme for plastic packaging. And also, um, we also partnered with uh, UN Habitat for their Health at Oceans and Clean Cities Initiative, which aims to reduce marine plastic pollution and address fundamental issues of plastic waste leakages. So, um, uh, this, uh, uh, through this, um, uh, as pointed out in the study, there is a need for a whole of government approach. We must involve all city civil society organizations, NGOs, the academy, and other private sectors to ensure that all concerns were uh, duly considered. And through these initiatives, we were able to further improve our implementation and development of policies. Wait, next slide, please. So we also provided uh, capacity development. So we um, continuously from uh, from 2011 or the start of our program, we have provided technical assistance uh, to our LG to our LGUs who have um, not yet drafted their 10-year solid waste management plans, and uh, we partner with our uh, with the Department of the In Environment and Natural Resources. So we also conduct workshops and coaching sessions to our LGUs and uh, on the conduct of their waste analysis and characterization and uh, on orientation alternative uh, composting technologies. Next slide, please. Yeah. And on the assessment of LGU compliance to our A number 9003, so we also have uh, we also have a sticks and carrot carrots uh, mechanism. So through this uh, conduct of audits such as LGU compliance assessment and Manila Bayani awards and incentive, we assess the level of uh, co compliance of our LGUs and their performance relative to environmental laws. Uh, to and. Um, Upon the results of the LGU compliance audit, we uh, we assess uh, the non-compliant LGUs for further validation to understand the challenges and gaps in the implementation, and as well to help uh, them and uh, give opportunity for our NGAs where they can help uh, our LGUs to uh, increase their. Um, compliance and uh, we, for the top performing LGUs, uh, we recognize them and uh, provide them with cash incentives. 
Next slide, please. So, uh, so these are some or uh, the latest uh, LGUs uh, that were uh, awarded uh, for um, for uh, their level of comply or uh, for their high level performance. So in Baliwag, Magallanes, and uh, City of Timo, City of Makati, and City of Balanga. Next slide, please. So, um, as mentioned, uh, that there is a need uh, to further add layer uh, in the complex, to add layer uh, considering complexity of uh, COVID-19 related healthcare ways. We actually have already um, issued a policy on it. So, in support to the National Solid Waste Management Commission Resolution Number 1364, um, which provides the guidelines on the management of COVID-19 related healthcare ways, we issued uh, supporting policy uh, MC number 2021 for G. So this is specific uh, provisions on how the LGUs can comply with the resolution. And um, relative to that, last March 2021, the department participated in the capability building on the management of COVID-19 related healthcare waste for LGUs. And this was spearheaded by our uh, Department of the Interior and uh, Department of the Environment and Natural Resources. So um, these were the elements that was part of the formula to increase the compliance of LGUs in Manila Bay, and this may be replicated at the national level. However, we note that while all these enabling mechanisms are already in place for solid waste management, we agree that there are still challenges and constraints uh, that are experienced by LGUs, which delays the realization of the plans uh, some of this are their lack of funding, limited technical capacity, and non-inclusion of solid waste management programs in the prioritization, um, their weak enforcement of the policies, and lack of institutional arrangements. Next slide, please. That's why uh, for um, further improvement of our implementation uh, for the next years, we aim, the department aims to uh, prioritize uh, the capacity building initiatives to our LGUs to help them um, develop plans that are appropriate uh, for uh, the status and current um, current level of their compliance, continuous uh, implementation and enhancement of audit tools, partnership with various agencies and the updating of local development plans consistent with current laws as we see that there are some LGUs that have failed to prioritize uh, solid waste management review of the local policies and uh, congruence with national laws. Um, as it was mentioned uh, that some of the uh, policies uh, that are implemented at the local level does not really reflect uh, the national um, the national uh, standard. And uh, strengthening uh, BSWMC and barangay roles and functions on solid waste management. So uh, there is a need to highlight for each, to bar each barangay uh, to collect their own recyclables and biodegradables. And um, since under our uh, existing policy, only the city and municipality will only collect residual waste. Thus, the functionality um, uh, of our barangays needs to be uh, strengthened. And um, if we can uh, implement this uh, thoroughly, uh, we can ensure that the functionality of MRFs as processing centers will increase. It will also reduce cost of collection by the city and municipality and promote segregated collection and disposal. And of course, um, if there is a mar if there is already an existing market, it will increase the revenue of barangays. And uh, linking LGUs with financial groups, as mentioned, not just uh, actually not just from uh, financing from NGOs and private sectors, but also funding from NGAs and enabling laws. So there is a uh, need to uh, maximize um, those uh, financial mechanisms uh, that are that are available to our LGUs and uh, for them to um, top these um, opportunities. And of course, we plan to actually craft a DILG action plan on solid waste management to uh, help the LGUs uh, comply uh, further and how to how we can effectively monitor that the uh, that the national loss on solid waste is uh, implemented at the ground. So uh, while it seems that uh, we still have a long way before we address the issue on solid waste, we note that there is 
they, uh, that we are actually still moving forward and uh, which which each step taken is a step to progress and actually on the national level we can see that there are a lot of changes already so we uh, have started talking uh, on the banning of single use plastics. We have started talking on, on the, intro the introducing of waste to energy facilities and um, clustering of materials recovery facility to increase the capacity. And um, on and we have already crafted the national action plan for um, marine pollution. So. Uh, looking in this progress, we hope that we can continue and uh, further enhance uh, as we go along uh, the implementation of uh, solid waste management. Uh, again, uh, it, the, hev the task is heavy uh, to uh, manage uh, solid waste, um, but we must understand and remember that this is not only for us, but for our future generation. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Marla. Very important ways forward that you've shared with us this afternoon. We can, you know, unpack this uh, ways forward during the open forum. Um, okay, so friends, um, our last discussant is none other than the Undersecretary for Solid Waste Management and Local Government Units Concerns of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. We are very honored to have with us today under Secretary Benny Antiporda before assuming his current post at the DENR, USEC Antiporda was director of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority and also served the government as chief of the Presidential Anti-Smuggling Group, Special Operations Group, and director of the Strategic Information Service, Counterintelligence Office of the Presidential Anti-Smuggling Group. And prior to his stint in government, he was a media practitioner and a former president of the National Press Club of the Philippines. He was also elected as president of the Confederation of ASEAN Journalists, which holds office in Jakarta, Indonesia. Yusek Aniporda, sir, the floor is now yours. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Sheila. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, uh, Madam Senator uh, Cynthia Villar, to our brothers and sisters in the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, our brothers and sisters also in the National Solid Waste Management Commission, uh, from the government, from the academe, and of course, from the media. Uh, magandang, magandang hapon po. First of all, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, the, the comments that were uh, uh, indicated here in the uh, report that was given to me by the EMB, uh, is first the uh, concurrence of the uh, study findings that uh, effective solid waste management needs the whole of government and whole of society approach as both institutions and communities are affected and involved. In each of the uh, preferred options identified in the solid waste management hierarchy, uh, entities with direct responsibility and influencing responsibilities were identified. This includes the citizens to do the uh, avoidance, reduction, reuse, and recycling, and the local government units for recycling and safe disposal. Number two, we concur with the study findings on the lack of available investment and financial resources at the LGU level. While the local government code and the uh, ecological solid waste management provided specific responsibilities to the LGUs, the Mandanas ruling would reshape the financial landscape of local government units. Although local governments are expected to assume additional devolved responsibilities, the Mandanas ruling could provide the LGUs additional resources for solid waste management. Number three, the uh, bureaucratic delays in the approval of 10-year solid waste management plans, as mentioned in the study, has been removed, if not minimized, a restructuring of the National Solid Waste Management Commission Group deliberating on the 10-year solid waste management plans was made to hasten the approval of these plans. The uh, lack of retention of technical uh, officers is a challenge to the local government units as the local government code does not mandate the creation of city, municipal environment, and natural resources offices. The National Solid Waste Management Commission has recommended to the LGUs the inclusion of the creation of the uh, 
City or the uh, Municipal Environment and Natural Resources Officer in the financial component of its 10-year solid waste management plan. We also concur with the uh, study findings that the national government may have to play a more active role in the design and financing of mandated sanitary landfills and clustering approaches among adjacent LGUs have to be promoted as not all localities can host the establishment of engineered facilities. The uh, DNR encourages the participation of the private sector to provide services on waste management, particularly on the establishment and operation of a sanitary landfill. Also, clustering of LGUs for disposal facilities are being supported to augment the need of a safe disposal facility. Now, uh, basically, th those are not uh, things that are not included in the assessment is the how the uh, stakeholders are involved in the decision making, the uh, crafting of policy, and of course, the uh, organizational concerns of the National Solid Waste Management Commission, including its funding and personnel deficiencies. For the information of everybody, uh, the recent developments in DNR is uh, uh, we convened the uh, sanitary landfill operators in the country to promote PPP between the LGUs and the private sector. It's because of the budgetary constraint that this uh, sanitary landfill operation was never successful. No, Yes, indeed, in some places it was successful, but uh, no majority area in the country, eh, talaga pong hindi man lang na umpisahan ito. Now, since there's also a problem to municipalities and some cities that cannot afford to uh, maintain a sanitary landfill, the DNR also promoted a clustered sanitary landfill operation system. So this is uh, the initiative of the DNR. We're in, uh, we are looking at the reality no? to really give uh, honest to goodness a solution in this solid waste management problem. And uh, as of last month, uh, all of the open dump site operations in the country what was shut down already. Imagine after 21 years of the RA9003, it was only last month that all of these open dump sites were shut down. Uh, this only proves that the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Secretary of DNR, Roy A.C. Mato, has the political will to do so. Uh, next is the uh, initiative in the part of the uh, Solid Waste Management Commission. When yours truly started as the uh, alternate chair of the commission, there are only about 300 solid waste management plans that was uh, approved in seven years of its existence. But in this administration, we passed almost 800 solid waste management plans, considering that in these three years, 15 months of it is under pandemic. As of now, there are about 558 uh, solid waste management, uh, management plans that is under evaluation. And we have about 76 uh, municipalities uh, the, the, that haven't uh, submitted their uh, solid waste management plans yet. We intend to uh, maximize the numbers that will be approved in this administration. Uh, looking forward that we can finish the 1,716 solid waste management plan in this administration of our president, Rodrigo Roba Duterte. As uh, closing to these comments of mine, uh, I would say that the overly simplistic transfer of responsibility to local government units, even just to complement the local government code, have resulted to two decades of medical policy grounding. Vertical institutional alignments also have to be revisited and strengthened as national and subnational connections appear weak, the national government must go beyond just oversight functions in policy grounding. Provinces must truly integrate the plans and programs of their covered cities and municipalities 
barangays have to be capacitated and empowered so that they can contribute and not be just dependent on municipal prodding and the strength of CSOs and other community groups have to be harnessed. So these are the uh, findings of uh, the DNR. And at the same time, we would like also to, uh, we would also like to uh, say something that unless we can uh, really define what is single-use plastic, then that's the only time that we can be successful. Because as of this moment, there is this uh, legal straight jacket that is hampering the, uh, the moves of the government against the uh, single-use plastic, which is, the, of course, the alternatives and the 10% uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the said uh, uh, the price of the uh, alternative should not exceed 10% of the original price of the being banned item. So these are the legal straight jacket that's uh, hampering our uh, our uh, um, responsibility in you know stopping this uh, uh, single use plastics. So for us, we would uh, come up with the uh, proposal that we come up with the decision uh, uh, a definition of unnecessary single use plastics. No, because these unnecessary single use plastics are those plastics na. We can live without it, diba? Why do we need alternatives for that? And yet, yes, indeed, we are considering the economic uh, uh, impact of banning these items. But it's very simple. It's unnecessary. So, siguro, with that, we can have a good start in identifying each and every product that should be banned in our society. With that, thank you very much for giving me this chance to uh, give our comments here in the DNR. Looking forward for a better and a cleaner Philippines. Thank you. And thank you very much, Lusek uh, Antiporda. Uh, hoping you could join us, sir, uh, for the open forum to uh, um, answer uh, questions from our uh, participants, sir. Uh, lang si Congressman ah, sa labas. Sorry. Okay, sir. No, no problem. Sorry. We are more um, than grateful, sir, for your participation yeah. today and for sharing with us your comments. Po, but I will keep this line open and uh, after this meeting, I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. No okay. problem. Sir. Thank, uh, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. much thank you very we much. We are very honored. Maraming okay, salamat thank you. Po. Okay. So that was uh, uh, Yusek uh, Benny Antiporda of uh, the Department of uh, Environment and Natural Resources. So friends, uh, before we proceed to our open forum, um, I'd like to tell you that we won't have a poll today. Nevertheless, we will pick three names from our WebEx participants and each of them will receive a prize, a PABS notebook. And I, I will announce uh, those three names uh, before we uh, close the webinar. Okay, um, I was uh, checking our chat box. We have plenty of questions. I think we should start the ball rolling. So at this point, I would like to invite our speakers, Dr. Domingo, Ms. Agas, um, Engineer Prialago, um, uh, for the open forum. So perhaps we can start with questions uh, related to your uh, presentation, um, Sunny. There are questions uh, we're in uh, some of our participants are seeking clarification and one of them um one of the first questions that we received is from mr asterio olandria i think this refers to um your um slide uh where in hold on um as opposed to qc and other locations can you elaborate on results ambiguous trend that was the slide wherein you um, presented the sources of funds. Um, Sunny, can you can you um, explain that? Sunny, did you hear me? Did you hear me? Yes, Sheila. Uh, yes. Just looking for the slide. Yes, it's um, slide 13. If our webinar team could please um, flash that slide, so. The others can can see it, uh, especially Sunny. Just preparing. Okay. okay. That's um slide thirteen. Ah, is it thirteen? Sorry. 
slide 13 in my copy. Uh, yeah, um, probably the checklist. It's, it's yes. uh, a slide on the checklist no, in terms of funding, priorities. Yes, 3.2, policy event. evolution and institutions. Bakit nga ambiguous yung, yung result compared to Quezon City, Bulacan, yes. um, uh, San Fernando? It's, it's probably because of uh, insufficient input with regard to this. Uh, Trend-wise, we are unable to measure, for example, or, or designate whether it's increasing or decreasing or, or what the trend is. But it's uh, in no way a negative indication of what uh, Rizal has to offer in terms of mm -hmm. what they're doing there. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, sign. Uh, Sheila, just, uh, just to add, no, I think this is a good segue uh, mm -hmm. to go back to what uh, Mr. Pialago actually commented early on. Uh, and I guess uh, we have to thank uh, Mr. Pilago because uh, early on we were actually able to uh, have a very long discourse with him. Uh, when we mm -hmm. went to Rizal, we had our interviews, we had our FGDs. He so was he's one of your key informants, Sammy. So yes, he was yes, one of, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He was one of the, the critical informants of our study. Okay. And it really pays to have somebody who's passionate, who's competent, and who's dedicated mm -hmm. to to something like this, you no, know, in terms of grounding policy, and you see it in result, and that's that's uh, I think the difference that you have in that LGU that can be replicated elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So again, congratulations to Mr. Pelago, and uh, congratulations to Teresa. Teresa well. Thank you, Pa. Okay, so let's move on to other uh, questions. Um, perhaps uh, Sunny and uh. uh Ms. Agas, uh, you can uh, comment on this. Uh, this is from um, Professor Lansigan of the UPLB. Um, and uh, he said, um, ESWM or Ecological Waste Man Management should be a joint responsibility of the LGUs and its barangays. In the case study sites, to what extent have LGUs empowered and shared the responsibility with the barangays from waste collection to sharing of income generated from the MRFs? Actually, the role of the barangays was concurred by Ms. Agas in her comments, as well as in the comments of the, um, of the undersec of, um, Undersecretary uh, Benny. So, Sunny, um, have you seen this in your study, wherein there yes, is, yes. you know, resource sharing? Yeah, can, can you um, expound on this and then we will go to Marla? Actually, it's one of the more critical uh, highlights in, in the study, you know, wherein you see uh, a very much endowed barangay level uh, set of officials in terms of responsibility, you know, but mm. less endowed in terms of capacity and in terms of resource. Now, uh, they are the smallest LGU unit, mm. and then the, really their interface with the municipal or city level counterparts is, is a bit unbalanced. You know? There is that imbalance in terms of um, what they have down the line. So you have thousands of barangays no, that are very much dependent on their uh, mother municipalities no, in mm -hmm, terms of mm -hmm. inputs, in terms of interventions, in terms of even capacity augmentation. So uh, I think as uh, what uh, you say, Kantiporda also mentioned earlier, there, there is that uh, scene gap no, in terms of capacity building down the line, down to the barangay level. And in the case study sites, it's very evident that, that we need that augmentation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there is a related question here be before I go to Mar before we go to Marlano. Yung solid waste management plan, it's at the municipal level. Are barangays required to submit a barangay level as the uh, solid waste management plan? Uh, we haven't seen any uh, concrete manifestation of such a, a plan. But there are attempts down the line no, within barangay levels. Just like, for example, when you are looking at thematic plans no, in, in terms of climate change, in terms of disaster risk management, there are supposedly barangay level counterparts. But um, everything has to be consolidated within the bigger municipal level. Now, in this case, in I think in terms of solid waste management, that's uh, a similar case. No? They are trying to consolidate everything, inputs from the barangay level, mm -hmm. just to have that uh, holistic view at okay. the municipal bigger level. Yes, yes. Okay. Sunny, 
um, I can see Engineer Pialago raising his hand. But sir, before I go to you, uh, we can um, ask Marla's um, remarks first, Marla. On that uh, importance of uh, having the barangays engaged and in terms also of the resource of the revenue sharing out of our your solid waste management initiatives. What can you say about this? Uh, yes, ma'am, actually, we do agree no, that uh, in terms of um, uh, solid waste management, the barangay has one of the uh, most crucial uh, roles as in the implementation uh, of, uh, of the solid waste management programs. Uh, it, the barangays are our front liners. And, um, mm. and uh, in terms of implementation uh, of the segregation at source, uh, segregated, uh, uh, segrega ensuring that um, the collected waste uh, are segregated and uh, also uh, ensuring um, that um, the the uh, the constituents are um, are uh, complying with the open burning, uh, no littering, and anti illegal dumping. Uh, we will rely on the barangays to monitor and uh, initiate the compliance uh, of uh, of our households and uh, other individuals. And um, just to add uh, with uh, the, the another question uh, on the barangay solid waste management plan, actually. Um, all barangays are encouraged to have their own plans that is con that is um in congruence with uh the local ten local uh local tenure solid waste management plan and actually um one of the best practices that i can share and, and i've observed uh from one lgu is uh, from the city uh, from the municipality of belanga uh, mm -hmm. what they did um from crafting their own plan, they actually capacitated uh, their barangays and um, they capacitated them in uh, developing their own barangay uh, solid waste management plan uh, to ensure that the programs from the local, uh, from the uh, mother LGU is um, also implemented at the grassroots. So, and uh, to ensure that um, there will always, there will be a funding uh, for this uh, solid waste management programs. Okay. Thanks for that, Marla. Engineer Pialago, uh, would you like to add anything, sir? We were talking, I, I think you would like to comment on the barangay level, so uh, solid waste management plan. Yes, uh, I just want to clarify that uh, as far as RA9003 is concerned, there was no mention there that the solid waste management program for the barangay must mm -hmm. be made. It mm -hmm. is the functions of the municipal government to prepare a 10-year solid waste management plan, which mm -hmm. comprises all the barangays in mm -hmm. an LGU. Mm -hmm. The barangay can prepare their, uh, say, uh, temporary plan as they see it fit, but they mm -hmm. are not obliged to prepare a 10-year solid waste management plan. What mm -hmm. we call them is that they have to prepare a short-term plan for their waste mm -hmm. management, right. which is doable, and then transfer it to a long-term plan based on the 10-year solid waste management plan of the municipal government. That is what our ANC 003 is supposed to be saying about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. You second before that, we're glad that you're back, sir. <laughs> yeah, but we must have been that one natin yung mga questions. Let, let me let me add some info about the uh, ten-year solid waste management plan. No, uh, I'm really grateful that nandito rin si Ma'am Agas, dahil napakalakin tulong no na explain niya. But okay, if we will. Uh, try to uh, analyze what is 10 year solid waste management plan seems like it's so simple to do it no and it will be simple also if we you know give it to the barangay tell the barangay to submit your plan also basically hindi po ganun kabilis yun no uh, when i assume that's the alternate chairperson uh, immediately we change the system it took us a hard time to change the system because we need to evolve also the the, the law uh, has been existing for already 20 years, no? But you can see na medyo mabagal yung ikot niya. Bakit kasi kailangan mag-evolve din yung tao, mag-evolve din yung municipalities, and hindi maka-patch up doon sa nakalagay sa RA9003. Just like the uh, innovations now when it comes to dito sa mga uh, mga technologies na lumalabas, no? Hindi siya 
terno doon sa 10-year solid waste management plan na noong una pa ginawa. So, we came up with the new system. Uh, before, it was uh, the executive director only who, who uh, uh, you know, sanitizes the 10-year uh, solid waste management plan goes to the technical working group then goes back to the uh, goes back to the uh, executive director then executive director sending it back to the region and the region sending it back to the municipality for the uh, revisions and additional informations would you imagine yung long process niyan and yet based on law once a month lang mag meeting ang national solid waste management commission so yun yung isa sa problema so what we've done we created the executive committee wherein it will be the uh, it will be the uh, commissioners themselves who will check on all these documents all these uh, submissions of the municipalities for it to be approved by the M bank and yet it is also the uh, chairperson or the representative of the said committee who in terms is the uh, commissioner also who will present it to the M bank para ano may smooth na yung operation that's why bumilis po ng uh, more than uh, 300% yung pag-approve po namin nitong 10 year solid waste management plan. That's why people are saying, ah, napakabagal niya naman ganun, no? And we've been working with zero budget. Oh. Wala pong budget ngayon kasi there's a problem dito sa jurisdiction when it comes to solid waste management commission. It is under the office of the president, but merong mga provisions doon na it is under the DNR naman. So what happens is Ang pinopondohan po ng gobyerno is the secretariat only, not the commission per se. Which is the EMB. The EMB, di ba, sir? Yes, the EMB. Uh -oh. So, we're having a hard secretariat. time with that, no? And we are in the process of uh, fixing it up also with the uh, with the uh, office of the president to uh, set the record straight. Na, eto na, eto na yung sistema natin, eto na yung gagawin natin. And yet, we cannot do it all at the same time. Especially, itong ang, uh, the very hot item here is the uh, non-environmentally acceptable product. Alam naman natin yan, yung NAYAP, no? Kaya kasi hindi rin ma-identify yung NAYAP na yan. It's because of the, what we so-called uh, legal straight jacket, yung binanggit ko nga kanina, no? Now, if it is an unnecessary single-use plastic, then, we don't need an alternative for that. We don't need the 10% na pressure niya or anything because it's unnecessary. Why? Yes, indeed, before we do use uh, plastic uh, uh, soft drink straws. No? Why? Because we use bottles, no? Yung glass bottles. Glass bottles, may tangsan tayo, no? The cups are uh, made of uh, uh, iron and kinakalawang siya. So, you need the plastic straw para hindi mo ma... Uh, madikitan yung kalawang, no? Now, we're using plastic already, plastic bottles. Now, do we still need these plastic straws? I don't think so. And what we're banning here is, to, to, to be clear, is the plastic soft drink straw only. Not those plastic na yung mayroong pang corrugated na parang may spring siya na naitutupi mong ganyan. It's being used also in the hospitals, no? So, these are things that we need to explain to the people so they would know na talagang we're doing something about this. And yet, of course, we need amendments in the National Solid Waste Management uh, Law, which is the, uh, the RA 9003, no? Dahil uh, kailangan ma-adapt natin yung bago ng sistema ngayon. No? And again, of course, when it comes to the... Uh, the uh, roster of the DNR, uh, the, the uh, National Solid Waste Management Commission, you can see that all the people who are advocating uh, for a cleaner environment only come and go. No, Just like me, I'm a co-terminus officer. I will uh, leave my position next year. But those people who are dependents of the uh, plastics stays in the commission. No, uh, Some of them stays there for uh, more than 10 years already. No? And yung familiarization with the uh, government officials also who are sitting in the, uh, no, not all, uh, but uh, most of them are uh, more uh, sitting there for more than five years, eight years. Yung familiarization nandoon na and yet yung advocacy ay eh, nawawala na. No? So for me, yun yung pinupropose ko nga dito sa DNR and of course sa uh, Malakanyang para once and for all, mabigyan natin ng honest to good solution itong solid waste management problem natin.
Thank you very much, Yusek. Before we jump to another topic, sir, uh, we have a question here also about the solid waste management plan from uh, a Facebook viewer, Eloisa de Guzman. Is MENRO appointment a requirement for the approval of the 10-year plan? Well, we encourage, no? but of course, uh, if we encourage the uh, local government, uh, definitely sa sabihin nila, yes, no? ilalagay na nila sa additional information nila, yes, we will appoint a MENRO. Kasi basically, if you look at the 10-year solid waste management plan, it is not only a plan. It is a contract between the Filipino people and the local government official. No? Uh, if in case that they don't abide by what it, uh, they've indicated in the uh, 10-year solid waste management plan, pwede po silang idemanda ng National Solid Waste Management Commission. Kung kaya, ang sinasabi namin kay Mayor, since ang umahawak niyan talaga, is yung inyong menro or yung inyong city enro, eh, isama niyo ho yung pangalan nila para meron hong uh, person who can be held responsible for this uh, uh, implementation. Okay. Thank you very much for the clarification, Yusek. Okay, let's uh, jump to uh, the topic of compliance. And uh, uh, Marla, since you're from the DILG, you may want to enlighten us on this. We have a question here from uh, Vicente Camilon. So, what happened to those LGUs that uh, did not comply with RA 9003? Um, were they penalized or uh, did they just got away? Yun ang tanong niya. And another related question from Pro Professor Ilan Sigan, how can we let the LGUs consider SWM plan in the preparation of their CLUP, CD, uh, CDP, and others? Uh, yes, uh, we have those questions, uh, Marla. Maybe get your response. Hello. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes, actually, um, uh, on the LGUs that have failed to comply, uh, as an example, actually, we issue shock cause orders. Uh, for last twenty eighteen, we actually issued a hundred, um, a hundred issue. Uh, show cause orders to non-compliant LGUs. Uh, for this, LGUs failed to draft their 10-year solid waste management plan. And uh, we um, um, we also have issued uh, show cause orders for LGUs uh, that have uh, that are still uh, operating uh, open dump site. And um, upon uh, if the LGUs failed to respond uh, to these um, warnings, we uh, we further uh, we further uh, endorse this uh, to the National Solid Waste Management Commission uh, for their um, for their uh, review and um, for them to uh, uh, to uh, file a case uh, file a complaint against this LGUs uh, in the environmental ombudsman. So so far, um, uh, we are still waiting uh, for uh, the response of environmental ombudsman on the uh, other LGUs that have failed to um, draft their ten-year solid waste management plan. And um, actually, uh, we also um, we are all we have also issued a show cause orders recently, uh, or we are about to uh, um, issue show cause orders um, for LGUs that uh, we have um, we have audited that failed to comply uh, with environmental laws, uh, not just for solid waste but also for liquid waste. And uh, informal settled families. So definitely, hindi po sila nakaka, nakakatakas sa mga kasalanan nila. So if we see that the LGUs uh, have, uh, there are really grounds for them, uh, or we can really see their uh, non compliance to the environmental laws, uh, specific for RN003, we uh, take an action, uh, legal action against these LGUs. And uh, in terms of uh, in if in terms of integrating this uh, solid waste management plans, actually, um, it is one of our um of uh, our ways forward uh, to encourage the LGUs to to uh, streamline or to add this um this solid waste management uh, activities or programs in their local development plans such as um CLUP CDP. Uh, so that we can ensure that uh, these LGUs uh, will, they, that we can see that they have a prioritization in this uh, solid waste management plan and ensure that there is budget allocated for uh, for solid waste. And um, actually, uh, we are already uh, including this uh, this uh, indicators 
to um to look into the LGUs uh, or indicators to uh for the top performing LGUs. So it's one of our indicators to ensure that um uh that that, that uh to ensure and encourage further other LGUs uh that if they uh, add this um these solid waste management initiatives in their uh, local plans uh they can uh comply uh with the national standards and actually i think uh it is also related to the other question on uh how to get uh how to ensure that there is a budget for solid yes waste. yes and actually i was about to ask you that uh, the question of uh jeff T. Muni uh, on um, you know if, if there is a, an existing policy as to budgetary allocation to ensure that the needed capacity building and infrastructure projects related to SWM will be included in the national budget. Marla. Yes, actually, yes. Yeah. So um, that's why we all we really encourage for them to include uh, their solid waste management programs or what they have, uh, what their strategies they have added in their tenure solid waste management plan to include in their CLUP and uh, CDP uh, so that uh, they can uh, provide the budget and also in their tenure solid waste uh, management plan. Actually, USEC uh, can uh, help me with this. We actually um, we uh, we. Ask the LG you encourage them to a lot more than five percent of their mm -hmm. uh, budget mm -hmm. uh, for solid waste, and okay. also, and also to add, uh, there was a recent uh, a recent um house house bill, um, house bill uh to uh provide funding not just actually for our cities and municipalities but also for the barangay. So um. Currently, uh, it's still uh, it's still yet to be discussed, but uh, I can provide you know, house bill numbers so that uh, we can also maybe consider in further new studies. But yes, th there are definitely a lot of um, tools that the LGU can use to ensure that they have the budget, and there are uh, there are also national policies that um, that are being uh, take are that are to be. Uh, implemented uh, to ensure for uh, that uh, the LGUs um, can have the sufficient funds to sustain their solid waste management programs. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Marla. Marla. Uh, I can see Yusek uh, raising his hand. Yusek, would yeah. uh, would you like to add, to add anything to that? Yes. Uh, yes. Basically, when we talk about the uh, budgetary problem no in the uh, solid waste management you can see no uh, especially on the 10 year solid waste management plan that almost a uh, uh, majority of local government units are uh, allocating only a maximum of 5% and uh, most of them uh, less than 5% are in allocate the budget no? that's why uh, when when they are presenting their 10 year solid waste management we, we encourage them to at least give 10% nga kung pwede pa, no? Para, ika nga, sufficient enough ito kung sakaling uh, maggagawa sila sa sariling sanitary landfill. But sad to say, talagang hirap sila, no? So, what we need to do right now is to come up with the solution doon sa problem. The, the filing of cases or uh, disciplinary action against the local government units is not the solution in uh, solving this problem, no? The solution here is giving them assistance by means of looking at the problem itself, na kung paano natin talaga i-approach to. Kahit na mabagal, at least meron tayong action na ginagawa. Just like the initiative of our uh, good, uh, our honorable uh, uh, Senator uh, Cynthia Villar, uh, she distributed the uh, composting machines no? through the DNR, of course. Uh, composting machines, tapos yung molders and the shredders, no? uh, to all uh, municipalities surrounding the Manila Bay area. This is a uh, of course, to compensate the project of the president in cleaning up Manila Bay. So, yun yung, yun yung mga bagay na ginagawa natin ngayon, wherein uh, we can see uh, improvement. No? And one thing more na hindi ko na i-present kanina ng Mayos is on the collection of the biodegradables. We, we, will, uh, we have been uh, coordinating with the ILG already. Uh, we can see that there's a clear... Uh, collection of uh, segregated uh, solid waste household waste no just like the uh, uh, by the, uh, the recyclables and the residual but no clear collection of biodegradables so ito yung uh, ito yung uh, next 
na move ng uh, National Solid Waste Management Commission and at the same time the uh, DNR to come up with a clear uh, collection and disposal of the biodegradables. Kasi if you'll notice, ang collection ngayon, hiwalay nga, hinihiwalay sa bahay, hindi people are learning how to segregate now eh. But sad to say, pagkarating sa truck, sabay. So, okay, yung mga recyclables, rather than uh, ending up in recycling plants, nakokontaminate, no? So, hindi mare-reduce yung basura. Wherein, since lumalaki yung population, lalong dadami yung basura. So, yun po yung uh, nakikita natin na one policy also that we need to come up with is the uh, uh, the, uh, the clear collection of the biodegradables. Okay. Maraming salamat, Yusek Antiporda. Okay, let's go to another question. This, time, this is from uh, Dr. Elihia Clemente. Um, and um, she's interested about you know those island munis uh, island communities. I think Sunny, in your in your study, Iba, you picked out uh, several best case uh, best practices, no. And um, what did you what did you see in your study, if any, when it comes to the solid waste management practices of island municipalities? Meron ba tayong pwedeng uh, meron ba kayong results or uh, anything that you can share about uh, this uh, this uh, areas? Uh, yes, Sheila. Uh, thanks for that question. Actually, if you're talking about island communities, you're talking about somewhat a different animal because mm. they have a very pronounced impact. For example, if you're looking you're at right. ecological, uh, ecologically related issues. So uh, we've tackled land-based, no? landlocked uh, case mm. studies. And those are, those are with their own issues and concerns. But um, Yes, just going to that uh, question, because prior to this uh, review or study, we actually had uh, small talks, small discussions um, with LGUs outside our case study sites. For example, we did, when we were doing our field works uh, in the Visayas, we also talked to uh, LGUs about solid waste management, and some of them are island communities. So a very big issue, really, um, is the totality of resources invested on solid waste management. And a lot of them have very uh, low levels of assets no, related to something like this. That, for example, uh, even the households are without access to collection systems. So a lot mm -hmm. of them are just burying uh, their wastes uh, on their backyards or something mm -hmm. like that because collection, system, uh, collection systems are not, uh, not present or they are non-existent. So that's one. If you're talking about, uh, if you're talking about uh, island communities that are really less endowed in terms of resource or those poorer uh, municipalities. But uh, I guess um, what is positive is, for example, in the case of Boracay, they are transporting mm -hmm. their solid waste outside their their political bound, and that probably has its own flavor, no, in terms of how they do it. Uh, locally in the most appropriate way. So they have to, to link with other uh, LGUs, with other stakeholders, with other uh, entities outside outside their own LGU. So that's a reality being faced by uh, certain LGUs. And that only highlights, for example, how relative and flexible um, all the approaches you know, to SWM um, when you look at our, our different municipalities or different LGUs. Uh, probably let's touch again to uh, on the, the question about resource as, mm -hmm. as answered earlier by, by Marla and Yusek Antiporda. Um, when we were talking to so many LGUs, their main concern really was the amount of funding that they can give toward the establishment of facilities related to SWM, and that uh, pertains really to uh, the engineered sanitary landfills mm -hmm. that are mandated, solely mandated no, in terms of our solid waste management disposal. And uh, the common answer really was they don't have enough funding for something like that. And that probably is the main reason why uh, downloading almost everything to our LGUs made the grounding of the SWM policy uh, very slow. No? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's as, as uh, Yusek mentioned earlier, it's just now that they have closed all the dump sites. No? Mm -hmm. Because closing the open dump sites really 
uh, gives them no other option but to to um, avail of the mandated legal uh, facility, which is non-existent in so many cases. So parang wala siyang choice. Eh. Where will you uh, send your your local waste, no? Without the existing facility that will cover or that will accept uh, the materials. So it's not really just us enforcing or forcing the municipalities. It's really us assuring that the system is in place. Mm -hmm. for, for example, for them, if they are going to comply, there has to be that recipient in terms of the generated uh, uh, waste that they have mm -hmm. within the locality. Otherwise, uh, kahit siguro anong hila mo sa kanila, hindi susunod. <laughs> Napakahirap na sumunod if you don't have any other option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's, let's go to another um, question because we still have a, a lot more um, to cover. And this is also from um, uh, uh, Dr. Clemente. No? Um, sabi niya, um, sanitary landfills takes a lot of space. Uh, land space which some LGUs cannot provide. Have you considered other options? I think kanina nabanggit mo and also ni Yusek yung um, clustered landfills no? uh, for adjacent regions. And this was, we have seen this in the case of Rizal wherein there are three sanitary landfills, uh, one in Montalban, San Mateo, and Morong, which service uh, Metro Manila and, and, and Central Luzon. Yes. Um, yes. Engineer, uh, can we hear from you, sir? Would you like? So there are options actually. May, may mga options yes. naman. Yes, there. Mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. And yeah. if I. Ah, uh, okay, Yusek. Uh, yeah. Quick response po. Yeah. Uh, as of now, uh, since we are proud of saying that we have shut down all these open dump sites, we're there having problems now, no? Saying na. Uh, Paano gagawin natin? Ganyan na lang yan. Diba? Isasara lang. Ganon. No, they need to come up with the uh, safe closure and rehab. no To avoid na dumating yung araw, bigla na lang sumabog yan. We know that it produces methane. Oh, yes, yes. So, una yan. Second, to those uh, municipalities who doesn't have their own sanitary landfills and wala silang pagtatapunan, they need to uh, implement uh, strict uh, source segregation. So, Ending up doon sa, uh, sa ang pinaka end game niya is yung RCA no yung residual containment area while waiting for the completion of their sanitary landfill which is mandated by law okay now since pinayagan na po yung clustered sanitary landfill uh, and we uh, came up also with this uh, uh, the the, the uh, sanitary landfill operators of the country it will be easier for the local government to seek for help, no? Hindi nila kailangan gumastos. Yung private ang mag-i-invest sa kanila and magbabayad lang sila pag nagtatapon sila ng residual. The lesser residual na itapon nila, the lesser budget na kailangan nila. So, it's, ano, no? These are all planned. It's not uh, implemented indiscriminately. Uh, yung RCA, this is residual containment area na yung residual, isasako mo, ilalagay mo sa bodega na yun, then iipunin mo siya then kapag napuno siya uh, kukunin siyang buo then dadalhin siya sa isang sanitary landfill of course babayaran nila yung sanitary landfill na pagtatapunan nila pero isang hakot lang na malaki kasi some of the local governments some of the municipalities eh napakaliit ng kanilang basura na it's not worth it na kunin pa business wise hindi makukuha yan ng mga uh, ng mga service providers but with this a system that was created by the DNR and the uh, National Solid Waste Management Commission, it is possible to do it. If, kasi we need to look at the reality rather than you know sticking to the law. Kasi pag nag-stick tayo sa RA9003, definitely we'll all fail. So mm -hmm. we need to come up with new system para makakop up tayo dito sa pagdabi ng basura natin. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Music uh, Benny. Okay. Uh, let me go back to um, Engineer Piel Pielago. I, I think you have something to say, sir. At may question din akong gustong itanong sa inyo. Sir? Yes. Uh, yes. Ganito po kasi if I may share, I don't know what's the big deal. On... Kasi, uh, ano po eh, if you are only doing or following the law, the waste generator, and waste generator is us. Everybody is waste generator. Kung na kung 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 na realize lang natin na yung ginagawa nating basura 
ay tayo din dapat ang may responsibility. I think it is uh, it can be done. Ngayon, mm -hmm. okay, the option, there is option. I, when I was in Sweden, sinasara nila doon ang landfill. Bakit? Kasi the seepage of the shade may contaminate the groundwater. Sa Sweden yun. They are using incinerator which is not allowed in our uh, country because it is the Clean Air Act. So what are the options? Here are the options. We start segregating. The law is already 21 years now. Mm -hmm. Start the practice of waste segregation. Ano ba ang basura? Dalawa, ano lang eh, nabubulok, hindi nabubulok. Lahat ng nabubulok, pwede natin gawin fertilizer. Lahat ng recyclable, pwede nating ibenta. Ang lahat ng residual, may option po. Ano ang option? The cement plant is offering their plant to accommodate all this residual waste because they are using it as alternative fuel. It is called refuse derived fuel which in Europe they are using since the 80s. Bakit hindi magawa? Ngayon, we started it by having a contract with the Republic Cement Corporation. They are paying us. Instead of us paying or giving it to sanitary landfill, the cement plant is paying us for that residual waste. Bakit hindi magawa ng iba? Nagagawa ng Teresa. Rizal Laguna is also doing it because I encourage them to do it. And they see the, the merit of what we are talking. Segregate it. Kaya po nagkaroon ng material recovery facility mm -hmm. is to store transfer station lang para sa residual waste at yun ang kukunin ng munisipyo para dalhin sa landfill. Huwag na sa landfill natin dalhin yung residual waste. Dalhin natin sa cement plant. They are very accommodating. Yun po. Okay. Thank you very much. Short lang. Short okay. lang about that. Okay. We, we convened the uh, cement factories already here in DNR, no? Mm -hmm. uh, or the information of the uh, very hardworking uh, uh, city and row, no? Uh, but sad to say, it is the other way around now. Since they have enough of this residual waste coming from Rizal and other provinces, yung iba na ibinibigay natin, they want us to pay them na. No? So it's the other way around. That's why we're having problems now. About the RDF, yes, indeed, it's good. Okay siya. But those far-flung areas, no, na walang malapit na, na cement factory, eh, hindi talaga uubra dahil mas malaki pa yung gagastusin ng transport kaysa doon Tama. sa uh, residual. No? That's why, that's the problem now. But again, it will again be uh, considered uh, deeply and uh, we will try to, uh, you know, uh, but this is only one of the solutions. Because if you will, uh, if you will summarize all the uh, solid waste at disposal, eh, napaalaki talaga na hindi kayang i-accommodate nitong mga cement factories lang. But we're doing it already. That's why nagkaroon nga tayo nitong refuse the right fuel. Well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yusek. Okay, Sunny, I saw you raising your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, just to... Uh, contribute to the exchange. Just going back to what the uh, engineer mentioned, siguro that's the easiest uh, solution to something like this. No? Change the behavior of individuals mm. and households. Kasi sa kanila yung pinakamalaking uh, production ng ating uh, solid waste. But it's uh, something that's really easier than said than done. No? Mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, really up to us to intervene and then do something about uh, what is not being done by individuals and households, which is to, to limit the production of solid waste as well as segregate and follow the law. So, yun yun dun. Pero uh, let's go back to the earlier question about uh, land for the sanitary landfill. Yes, so, okay. I think it's, it's a very valid concern for LGUs, no? for them to identify, for example, a suitable area for their sanitary landfill. And in so many cases, some LGUs uh, really do not have any option but to avail of facilities outside their political bound. No? So, talagang clustering approach is necessary uh, in these cases. They have to avail of services, facilities that are not being offered within their, their own locality. Another concern is, kung meron ka man sanitary landfill, it's not there uh, in perpetuity. Merong lifespan ng ating mga sanitary landfills. And for Quezon City, 
that was a big concern because they have payatas and payatas was converted into a controlled dump site from an open dump site and then eventually to an engineered sanitary landfill. And then they just operated that for seven years before it was saturated. So nawalan sila ng sanitary landfill, just seven years. Ano? So uh, it's not really just identifying a single area for a dump site or for a sanitary landfill. It's really you uh, further engaging your, your imagination, your planning uh, prowess no? uh, years and years down the line for you to be able to sustainably address this concern about having the right uh, spatial requirement for a sanitary landfill. And I guess in Central Luzon, in Pampanga, in Bulacan, they are uh, looking at a potential crisis because uh, sanitary landfills nearby are being saturated. Na rin. So um, it's an ongoing concern, very dynamic in concern and solid waste management. And really, katulad din sinabi ni Yusek, uh, yung cement uh, factory option, ano, dynamic din nangyari. No? From, from them accepting uh, materials as alternative fuel, now they are charging because saturated na rin yung uh, well, intake ng material. So, hindi ganun ka simple, but I think it's very exciting, especially for passionate people like engineer. No? Uh, this is a puzzle that needs solving and the eventual uh, yield is very rewarding, I guess. No? Thank you. Thank you, Sunny. We have a question here, another interesting question this time from Elisa Manuel. What is the progress of establishing the Solid uh, Waste Management Fund? Um, who can answer this? <laughs> yeah. Who wants to answer this? Uh, you, you said? You <laughs> Again, again, please, again. You what shake, is yeah. the progress? What is the progress of establishing the Solid Waste Management Fund? Kayo yung tinuturo nila yung sek na sumagot. Wala daw po ando si Yusek eh. <laughs> Matagal na yan. <laughs> well, eh, as of now, uh, I haven't heard about this uh, Solid Waste Management Fund. No? Uh, basically, but, I, but it's in the law, di ba? It's in uh, 9003. It diba? should, it should it be. It's in the it law. Yeah. And it, just like what I'm saying, di ba? Uh, we're, we're working with zero budget. No, kasi uh, nung dumating po tayo, napakaraming requirements nung uh, nung ating 9003 coming up with the uh, with the uh, uh, yung etong ang mga sanitary landfill and everything, but hindi clear yung budget, no? Hindi siya clear saan kukunin uh, ano mangyayari. So hindi siya clear uh, and uh, oh, oh, hindi ko na lang binasa kanina kasi nahihiya po ko. Oh. And one of the uh, not included in this assessment is the organizational concerns of the National Solid Waste Management Commission, including its fundings and personnel deficiencies. No, so this is also one of the problem. But you know, uh, I don't think this is the right forum for me to say this. But we are trying to find a way to solve this problem internally. No, but uh, again, we're uh, trying to come up with. Yung what uh, we can say uh, doable no in solving this problem. Kasi ang doable lang naman talaga, talaga rito kasi budgetary problem to eh. So if budgetary problem, ilink natin yung private and yung government. So one one solution already no. Uh, pag nasolve natin yan, then comes the technology just like the sanitary landfill no. Okay, assuming pinondohan po yan. Kung gumamit tayo ng lupa, napuno yung lupa, saan natin lalagay? We all know that technologies are coming in already. There are this uh, methane harvesting uh, system, there is this waste to energy, there is a uh, waste to fuel, uh, marami pong technology. No? And this sanitary landfill can serve as the uh, feedstock of the incoming technologies. No, this is a preparation. This is not about sanitary landfill only. No, mm -hmm. unlike uh, before, ang uh, ginawa po ng ating pong pamalaan, eh, basta tambak nyo lang dyan. Pagkatapos tambak nyo, hanap kayo ng ibang lugar, doon kayo magtapon. No, hindi po ganoon. No? Since nakikita na po natin, napapasok yung technology. And believe me, pag dumating na po yung mga technologies na yan, baka po magkulang naman yung basura natin. Same like what happened to the RBF. Yun naman po na napuno siya na 
hindi na siya bumibili. Siya naman ngayon ang kailangan bayaran. So, eto ho, ganun na rin ang mangyayari in the future. Thank you very much, Yusek. Um, another um, interesting question from uh, Eva Montero um, concern, uh, about the role of SUCs or uh, state universities and colleges in the implementation of uh, the Act. Uh, perhaps I can throw this question to you, Marla, because you have been partnering, I think, with the University of the Philippines. Uh, yes, actually, ma'am, um, as I've mentioned uh, in my presentation, we actually um, per actively participate you know, with uh, our SUCs, um, yes. so not just in UP, uh, but also um, other groups. So uh, actually, some of uh, the studies you know, that uh, they, um, they have, uh, uh, that, they, that we have discussed, uh, the recommendations from this study uh, are also one of our bases uh, to further enhance the implementation no, of the DILG uh, in terms of uh, solid waste management. And of course, um, this, uh, this, um, this uh, studies uh, for all or the proposals no, from this SUCs uh, are what we, um, we look forward no, or we, um, we note so para sana ano, in further uh, not just um, for for DILG, no, but also we, for, so that we can uh, connect this, no, with uh, other other NGAs or uh, other NGAs uh, that we have already partnered with. So, um, UP, uh, UP University of the Philippines, um, uh, uh, Diliman, and uh, University of the Philippines Las Banas. So we have uh, partnered with them. Also, we have participated in studies from the Ateneo. And um, also studies, uh, we have also um, attended some discussions you know, with uh, uh, studies on uh, plastic awareness uh, done by our researchers from USD. So we really encourage uh, the SUCs, um, are, I mean, our department is very open uh, to uh, partner with our uh, SUCs. No? Um, if they have uh, studies uh, that or if they want our department to um, partake uh, in their study to uh, consider what uh, what our department ha has in terms of the av available data or um, or it's a sharing kasi no, of uh, sharing then um, for us we will gain uh, yung recommendations since uh, we don't really have a, a research team or a research develop team uh, for solid waste and to focus on solid waste so um it's we benefit from the recommendation made by this uh, SUCs and uh, researchers and uh we help them through uh, the data available that we have and actually mom not just um not just uh from the UP, uh, from the institutes there are a lot of students that have actually um asked uh help from us to um comment and provide data data or uh, insights uh, on the studies that they have uh, created or they have um, uh, they have developed so oh. yes um, we really encourage all our SUCs uh, to um, continue your research and uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, as long as the data is available we'll always be um, give, we will always be uh, willing to uh, provide you the information you need Thank you very much, Mar Marla. We have only a few minutes left. Uh, we are down to our last two questions. Uh, perhaps, uh, Engineer, you can answer this. This is from Antonio Avila, and uh, you may want to share uh, the practice in in uh, in uh, Teresa. Um, Mr. Avila is asking if it is possible to impose garbage fees on businesses and residents. Are you doing that in Teresa, sir? And are the collections from gar garbage fees enough to finance solid waste management? How about environmental fees imposed by some LGUs? Sir? Ah, it is allowed by the law. It Actually, it is in Republic Act 9003 that the barangay can impose a garbage fee. But it is mm -hmm. not supposed to be used in other activities other than the implementation of solid waste management plan. So it is in the law. They can impose it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you very much, um, Engineer Pialago. And uh, for our last question, we have here uh, from uh, uh, one of our Facebook viewers, Myra David. We were talking a while ago about the 10 year solid waste management plan, and she's uh, wondering if um, these plans have been updated uh, to, um, to address uh, the requirements of, uh, you know, to address the issues posed by the pandemic. So, um, updating plans now, uh, she said, now require waste characterization, including uh, COVID-19 related waste and completing the plan may take an LG about one to two years. Uh, Marla, would you like to comment on that? Uh, then I will ask you, uh, uh, Benny, if he is available, still available. Marla? Yeah. Actually, um, um, uh, in our position, uh, our 10-year solid waste management plan must be updated uh, every year um, from um, from the uh, from its approval. No, um, uh, uh, this is being monitored by, by our DNR agency. And um, in terms, actually, of COVID waste, we have already included or uh, integrated our COVID waste management plan. Um, it is. Uh, it is also uh, it is already encouraged no, sa LGUs natin. As I've uh, presented earlier, uh, we have a resolution, a national solid waste management resolution on this. And uh, we also have a supporting policy through our LG memorandum circular, which provides for the LGU to uh, include their COVID waste management strategies as an addendum uh, to their solid waste management plan. And um, it's actually uh, it provided also no um, in that is uh, yung paggawa na LGUs natin ng mga COVID waste management plan. And uh, sa LGUs natin no, na, na nakasama natin ngayon, they can, uh, they can uh, um, coordinate with their EMB regional offices um, to uh, for the template of this COVID waste management plan. So um, last March, uh, there was a seminar on it on how the LGUs can comply with the resolution and further um, and manage you know, this uh, COVID-19 related healthcare waste, uh, not just at the institutional level, but also at the household level. So um, our uh, LGUs and also our citizens you know, uh, can coordinate uh, with uh, the LG, uh, with their uh, the DNR regional offices, no. If uh, the LGUs, uh, of, if their LGUs are already are complying with uh, the provision in the resolution and um, the DALG memorandum circular. Thank you very much, Marla, and thank you for joining us today. Um, Sunny, before we finally end, uh, would you have any final words to say? Are you thinking of a follow-up study uh, related to this topic, probably? Yep, probably, uh, Sheila. Thank you for for asking me. Uh, this is a very rich uh, ground for further research, and I guess in terms of interest among stakeholders, uh, it's very high. You know, not only from NGAs, but also down the line to our subnational stakeholders. So just uh, probably as parting words, you know, two decades it's is a bit too long for us to see manifestations of grounding policy. Mm -hmm. And for SWM, I guess this is very important in terms of the concerns of our local stakeholders. And us uh, asking for uh, appropriate uh, results or yields coming from uh, the implementation of something uh, that is, I guess, very practical in terms of grounding. It's just, uh, it's just proper and, and timely and probably still forward looking. You know? So um, uh, we are looking at something that is transcending both special concerns as well as uh, time concerns. You no, know? we are looking at the present and looking at the future as well, in terms of us uh, dealing with this concern on solid waste management. So thank you, Sheila. And thank you too, Sunny. I know that you're very busy uh, these days, you know, doing that livestock. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, <pinaalala> <laughs> I, I think that the senator, Senator Villar is uh, watching us right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, before I go to uh, um, uh, Yusek Benny, Engineer Pialago, sir, um, any uh, parting words, sir? 
we are very happy that, that you could join us today. A parting word is this. Uh, hindi po ito alam ng karamihang tao siguro. Pero ang layo ko lang sinasabi, ang gumagawa ng basura ay tayo. Tayo eh. So tayo dapat ang mag may responsibilidad na ayusin. Ang hinihiling, na, ang hinihiling lang ng gobyerno, isegregate nyo, kukolektahin namin. Yun lang. Pero por Diyos, por santo naman, gumawa ka na nga ng basura, kung saan, saan mo pa itinatapon, bakit hindi mo ayusin? Kung ayaw mong mag-ayos ng basura, huwag kang gumawa. Ganun lang, as simple as that. Ang sabi nila, ay paano mo ipaparamdam sa tao yan? And that is where the crux of the matter is coming. We have to educate these people. There must be a moral transformation. And moral transformation can only be done through information education campaign. That is the truth of the matter. And what is the government doing? They have to focus on this. Even a 10 seconds and the TV every day has to be put for information education campaign about solid waste management. Yun ang aming isinasigaw lagi. Noon pa. Wala. Much better pa yung mga commercial na ano. Samantalang mayroon naman tayong TV station na. TV4 and TV... I'm, I'm very disappointed pagka yun ang usapan kasi alam na alam natin ang problema. Bakit hindi natin gawing bigyan ng solusyon? Sasabihin natin, matitigas ang ulo. Kasi hindi nila nakikita kung gaano kahalaga yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. Salamat po. Tama na. At marami pong salamat, Engineer Pialago. Okay. And of course, last but not least, may we hear from Music Antiporda, uh, given the important role of the DNR, uh, in addition, of course, to the uh, DILG, DNR through the Environment Management Bureau, uh, which acts as the Secretary of the National Waste Management Commission. Sir, please. Thank you. And uh, first, I want to thank uh, PIDS for this opportunity. You know, uh, these are things that are kept inside of us that we have nowhere to bend out, you know, especially on this situation. Uh, basically, uh, there's this saying that lucky are those ugly people, that there are what we so-called the last, but not the least. But when it comes to solid waste, it is always the last and the least in our priorities. No? Now, how do we approach this? In, I'll put it in a layman's term. We should address this from 1 to 10. No? Start from the very beginning, which is the source segregation, up to the end stage, which is the disposal area. Now, sa segregation, would you imagine nakahanda bang makipag-away ang ating pong mga barangay uh, officers the officials doon sa kanilang mga constituent who in turn votes for them in election time no so what happens is they just tolerate it di ba eh, hindi yung sila handa makipag-away para lang sa basura so we encourage the uh, stakeholders to come up with the uh, environmental marshals that barangay 1 will look after barangay 2 para hindi po sila yung botante no po na ang mag issue po ng citation ticket doon po sa hindi nagsesegregate, eh ito pong mga environmental marshals from Barangay 1. Who looks after Barangay 2, Barangay 2 looks after Barangay 3, Barangay 3 looks after Barangay 4. So, hindi po nai-involve yung mismong Barangay chairperson nila doon sa lugar na yun. And of course, with that, with the citation ticket, yung mga penalties and uh, of course, yung mga... Uh, service na dapat nilang gawin if in case mahuli sila, pupunta sila kay mayor, makikiusap sila, and mayor will tell them na huwag mo nang uulitin to. No? Y hindi po yung parusa ang habol natin. Ang habol natin, is a hard time for them na ang hirap pala pag nahuli ka. So, one, no? last but not the least, this sanitary landfill, would you imagine that sanitary landfill operators are treated as devil in, uh, in 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 towns and in, in municipalities and uh, LGUs. Why? Pagdating nila, ah, magdadala kayo ng basura sa amin. Hindi. Mga, hindi kayo pwede rito. Ayaw namin kayo papasukin. Magra-rally ang tao. Now, sad to say, some of the government officials, eh, kailangan mo pang bigyan ng padulas para lang maaprubahan yung sanitary landfill operation mo. Now, it's a different ballgame. What we're trying to do right now is we 
in the national government sa promoting partnership para hindi maging biktima itong mga investors na to and at the same time yung local government din e ma-implement nila na hindi na sila mga biktima ng mga uh, disgruntled uh, uh, government uh, non-government organizations na sirain yung kanilang plano para sa kanilang solid waste management so yan lang po masasabi natin ilagay lang po natin sa layman's term ito yes indeed it is easier said than done but again we can give it a try because with that, matatapos natin ang problema ito. Thank you very much. And thank you very much too, sir. On that note, friends, please join me in thanking our speakers, Dr. Sonny Domingo, Yusik Benny Antiford, and Ms. Marla Agas, and Engineer Marlon Pilago for the valuable information and insights that they have shared with us this afternoon. Let us uh, give them a big virtual clap and thank you to all our participants who um, joined in the open forum. Okay, so friends, before we finally close, allow me to announce the winners of our uh, draw for this week. Uh, Bonnie Firm Makawile, Julius Casabal, and Rosemary Casimiro. Bonnie Firm Makawile, Julius Casabal and Rosemary Casimiro, we uh, you uh, won in our show uh, for um, today, and our webinar team will contact you for your prize. And finally, we have some reminders before we close. Um, okay, friends, you may download copies of the presentations from the PIDS website and. Uh, uh, flash on the screen is the link to the full study of Dr. Sani Dubingo and Ms. Arby Choi Manihar. Uh, we'll also um, provide copies of the presentations of our or, or the comments of our discussions. And please help us improve our webinars by answering our survey. Uh, we would like to serve you better, so your comments are important to us. And always visit our website for knowledge products of PIDS as well as updates on our forthcoming webinars and continue to follow us on our social media pages. Thanks, thanks to all who uh, um, joined in our webinar today uh, through Facebook. And for our uh, remaining webinars this June, we have for next week on um, agrarian reform about improving the land tenure security farmers and the role of agri agrarian reform beneficiary organizations in enhancing agriculture productivity. That's on June 17. On June 23, um, this one is a, um, um, a conference organized by the Philippine Apex Study Center Network uh, on navigating the new normal, restarting and rebuilding uh, global MSMEs. This on June 23, on the, the next day, we have um, our regular Thursday webinar. And uh, our topic on June 24 is on senior high schools, senior high school graduates, prospects and challenges in the labor market. And would like to thank all uh, the representatives from government, from uh, the private sector, civil society, academe, um, and the media uh, for um, participating, for joining us in our webinar today. And we hope to see you again in our uh, virtual future virtual events here at PIDS. Okay, friends, so this, this concludes our event for this week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed too. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.